So everybody's talking about the Apple card. So we decided here at the Sweetie Kiwi Show to review this card and we really want to come through the card, look at its pros and cons. So in today's show, I want to talk to you about the perks and rewards of Apple Card. And the question is, are those perks and rewards worth it for Apple fans? Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or a tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about Apple Card Review. I want to give you a review of the card because it's an important card. I mean, the Apple Card is the first credit card offered by Apple and issued by Goldman Sachs. It's designed to work with iPhones, the iPhone's uh, wallet app and Apple Pay. So for those times when you can't pay digitally, you also get a physical card with your name laser etched into its titanium surface that you can carry as well. That's fantastic, right? We love that. And the thing is that unlike most credit cards, there is no card number or CCV code on the Apple card. So if you need that information, it's stored in your wallet app. In other words, using this card without an iPhone to go with, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> in many ways, the Apple Card is a straightforward credit card, but it has some unique features that bear mentioning. So the, the card is primarily designed to be used with your iPhone's wallet app, and you can pay for products with it using Apple Pay through your iPhone or Apple Watch. And the thing is that you will receive the best rewards if you use the Apple Card Pay and the Apple Card with the Apple Pay, which include the following. So you have a uh, as much as the 3% cash back when making purchases with participating merchants, 3% on all purchases made directly with Apple, such as Apple's. So if you make purchases at a Apple stores or using the app store, 2% back on all other Apple Pay purchases. And if you use the physical titanium card rather than Apple Pay, you will get 1% back. So rather than waiting 30 days for your rewards to be applied to your account, all rewards are applied daily to your wallet's Apple Cash account. We love that. This is a great feature. And you can use Apple Cash to make purchases or to pay your Apple Card balances. And so how to get how do you get the Apple Card? There is really there is no online application for Apple Card to apply. You have to open the wallet app on your iPhone and then tap the plus button in the upper right corner. So choose Apple Card and complete the form. And the qualification process only takes a few moments and you can start using the card with your approved credit limit immediately. All right. So um, basically, uh, so how do you pay with your Apple card? There are three ways you can use your Apple card using the wallet app and Apple Pay by swapping the physical card when Apple Pay is not an option and by giving the merchant your credit card number. Once you complete the application process, your Apple card is automatically added to your wallet app and you can make purchases with Apple Pay as you would with, uh, say, any other credit cards that you have, you have added to your iPhone. And the thing here is that so once your physical your, your physical card arrives, you can uh, also swipe the card at a point of sale terminal at a POS terminal. And the card doesn't work with contactless terminals, though. This is important to uh, to mention. So if contactless if contactless purchases are an option, you should use Apple Pay with your iPhone or Apple Watch instead. So to get the best rewards, you should use Apple Pay whenever possible. And um, finally, if you need a, your card number and CCV code to make a purchase, like if you're buying something by phone, for example, your Apple Card can generate a secure virtual credit card number for non-Apple Pay purchases. And here is how to find that number and CCV code. So. First, you want to open the wallet app. You want to tap the Apple card. So in the upper right corner, you want to tap the three dots, tap card information, and you should see the card number, expiration date, and CCV code. 
and you can tap request new card number at any time if you suspect the current one has been compromised and you will instantly get a new virtual number without needing to request a new physical card from Apple. All right, this is very important now. The, uh, at the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show, folks, we, have, uh, we are dedicated to giving you an unbiased, comprehensive credit card review. So to do this, we actually collect data on hundreds of cars and scores, and we actually score tens of features that affect your finances. And one thing I want to say here is that uh, our reviews are always impartial, and uh, you have to understand that uh, you, when, when reviewing this uh, Apple Card review, that when reviewing this Apple Card, actually, we made sure that we paid attention to a couple of things. What are the rewards worth? Does it make your life easier? How much does it cost? And a constellation of other uh, criteria. So please check out this short video. We actually uh, have a strict approach when it comes to evaluating, categorizing, and listing credit cards, including business credit cards on this show. And uh, just so you can understand our methodology, check this out right now. So when we talk about the Apple card, who is this card best for? So our research shows that this card is great for deal seekers and savvy savers. So the minimal fees make this a good low cost addition to your Apple wallet. And that's the only place you should keep it really. So when making purchases outside of uh, Apple or without Apple Pay, you are better off with one of the many no annual fee credit cards that we have reviewed on this show because those cards will give you, they will pay 1.5 to 2.5 percent cashback on all purchases and have a variety of benefits for example there is no promotional purchase apr which other cashback cards often offer that said with the uh, apple card monthly installments you'll get up to 24 months to pay off apple products purchased from apple interest free while still earning three percent cashback that's that's a great deal really so if you bought let's say if you bought a, a macbook air at one thousand dollars you would earn thirty dollars cash back for one purchase and still get two years to pay it off without it without paying interest so that's a that's a great deal so what are the pros and cons of uh, of uh, apple credit card so exceptional rewards for apple and partner merchant purchases interest-free payments plans on apple products great rewards rate on apple pay purchases financial management tools low end of apr range is among the best what what about the cons so this card really the apple card is only worth it for apple users so if you're not an apple user then it's not really worth for it's not really worth it for you you have uh, the one of the drawbacks you have subpar rewards rate on non apple on an apple and non apple pay purchases few benefits limited integration with uh, budgeting apps and does not allow authorized users and so one of the things we love about apple the apple card is that you have exceptional rewards for apple and partner merchant purchases you have interest-free payments plans on uh, apple products again i spoke about that, that earlier you have up to 24 months that's great right you get great rewards rate on apple pay purchases so a wide variety of major brick and mortar retailers, websites, vending machines, and transit systems accept Apple Pay. So the card's rewards rate on Apple Pay purchases is on par with and sometimes better than uh, the best flat rate rewards credit cards on the market. And another um, benefits we love with the uh, Apple card is that you have financial management tool. So a lot of tools are available to you. So Apple brings its signature design standards to a product that lacks visual excitement, credit card statements. So the interactive features offer a new way to understand credit card interest and how your payment behaviors affect it. And you also have low end of APR range is really among the best. Now, having said that, there are a few things that we that could be improved on the Apple card. Listen, it's not it's not all angelic, 
all beautiful. No, they have stuff they have to work on. So some of the drawbacks, and, and now I'm going more in detail about the drawbacks. If you are not, if you're not an Apple user, the card is, has no value for you. Zero, nada, zero. And uh, the, the, you also have the subpar rewards rate on non-Apple and non-Apple pay purchases. So the physical Apple card may look cool, but there is no reason to carry it, to carry it with you if you're open to having more than one credit card. So cards like the Capital One Quicksilver or Chase Freedom Unlimited offer a better rewards rate on all purchases hands down hands down we've tested this now the, the apple card has a few fewer benefits so as a financial tool this card offers a little beyond the rewards on apple purchases and apple pay so if you're looking for a welcome bonus or features like a free credit score or a rental car insurance this is not a card for you you also have limited limited integration with budgeting apps here i'm talking about you need a, a budget wide nap means and so on and so forth if you use a third-party app to keep track of your expenses this card will not be able to automatically ingest your apple card spending into the the, the third-party app you can export your transactions and upload the file to your money ma management app but the thing is that it's not really seamless as what you would see with other uh, credit cards however apple card offers a number of in-house features to track your spending with a card an Apple uh, card actually does not, uh, they, they don't allow authorized users. So this is an extremely uncommon feature for a credit card issuer to not allow you to add another user to your credit card, but Apple does that. So, and what about earning points and rewards? Now, the Apple card offers what it, what it calls a daily cash. And this is its own version of cashback rewards. So cardholders earn 3% daily cash on Apple purchases, 2% on purchases made with Apple Pay, and 1% on purchases made at merchants that do not accept Apple Pay. So the physical card, like many cars going for a high-end look, is made of metal, in this case, titanium. And Apple also has a few partner merchants where cardholders can get 3% daily cash when using Apple Pay, including Uber, Uber Eats, Walgreens, Nike, ExxonMobil, Panera, and T-Mobile in uh, in-store purchases only. And Apple Car does not limit the amount of daily cash you can earn, and daily cash does not expire. This is fantastic. We will love that feature. So if you have unredeemed daily cash, if and when you close the account, Goldman Sachs will either credit it to your account, send it to you electronically, or mail you a check. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still uh, reviewing the Apple Card here, and I want to talk to you now about redeeming rewards. So daily cash automatically accrues on your Apple Cash Card, which you can then use on anything that you pay for with Apple Pay. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. And users without an Apple Cash account can redeem daily cash as a statement credit. And you accrue and use your daily cash within a day of the transaction clearing, so you can use rewards more quickly than you can with other cashback credit cards. That's one of the fortes of, uh, of this card. And how to get the most of your Apple card. So you wanna use the cards for purchases directly with Apple. That's the smart way to do things, including music and apps, and with partner merchants where you can also earn 3% daily cash. You also take advantage of Apple card monthly installments to spread the cost of your Apple product purchases over several months. Again, this is up to um, 24 months for iPhones. And you do this interest-free, think about it. And you're still getting the 3% cash back. That's like double dipping. That's a double rewards here, right? Keep in mind that if you buy Apple products through another retailer, even one authorized to sell Apple products, the 3% rate does not apply. And neither does the monthly installment plan. So you want to buy at an Apple store. Okay? So other than that, use the card at retailers that accept Apple Pay unless you have a rewards card that earns a higher rate at that type of vendor. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a card that gives you more than two points per dollar spent on entertainment. Even if the movie theater you go to accepts Apple Pay, you want to use the other card to buy your tickets. That will be the smartest tactic here. Okay? And so you, you can also maximize rewards by redeeming daily cash as a statement credit. 
So using daily cash via Apple Cash means you're not earning rewards on those purchases when you could get 2% back using Apple Card with Apple Pay. So this is the kind of a thinking you have to constantly have when you use the card if, you, if your goal is to get the most out of your card, all right? So what about uh, Apple Card's other features? I've spoken to you about, about a lot of features, but the card has other features that are worth mentioning. So you have budgeting tools. Again, we spoke about how ergonomic Apple is when it comes to designing its products. You see you have the budgeting tools. So even though you have a no integration with third party budgeting apps, you can still uh, benefit from embed embedded budgeting tools. Uh, you also have a credit card that tool that shows the how the amount you pay each month affects the amount of interest you owe. And in terms of customer service, Apple Cars at Goldman Sachs first credit card. So this is really for them unknown territory and the customer experience remains to be seen. On a positive note though, you can ask for help and receive support via text, though it's unclear if this service is available 24 seven. And um, so the Apple Car does not offer a free credit score unlike most of its main competitors. And, um, you know, customer experience, even for non-customers. The, the cool thing here is that you don't have to actually have the card to benefit from it. If you apply and they are not approved, you may be asked to enroll in Goldman Sachs Path to Apple Card program to improve your finances. And basically what the program does is that it tracks your, your progress through several customized steps, such as making on-time bill payments, reducing overall debt levels, and resolving any past due accounts. And after successful completion of the plan, you will be invited to reapply for the card. I mean, this is uh, un this is unparalleled in the industry. The ability to work with a customer, the ability to work with uh, with a prospective card holder to help him or her get to the level where he or she should get before the card is, is issued to him or her, that's fantastic. Goldman Sachs, kudos, kudos on that. What about security features? So you have uh, numberless credit cards. So both the physical and virtual Apple cards, both the physical and virtual Apple cards have no numbers on them. So for non-Apple pay transactions on apps or websites requiring a card, the wallet app or Safari web browser autofill a virtual card number. And you have also uh, the uh, another security features that we love. This is the integrated map data. So you can tap a transaction you don't recognize to pull it up in maps and see where it occurred. This is this is fantastic, not only for the card issuer, Goldman Sachs in this case, but also for you as a customer, right? Let's say your card has, God forbid, it has been hacked and somebody's, somebody's using your card in uh, say Bulgaria or Venezuela, for example. By using the actual, by using the integrated map data, you can actually pinpoint what the transaction is happening and alert Goldman Sachs or Apple on the uh, fraudulent transaction and uh, maybe catch the thief or whatever. So that's great. Now, what about the fees? I mean, the fees, it's very, it's important to talk about the fees, right? The uh, Apple card has very few fees partially because it doesn't offer things like cash advances or balance transfers. So late or missed payments don't carry a fee but will result in additional interest accruing on your balance. Merchants in dozens of country or countries accept Apple Pay. So let's say if you find Apple Pay acceptance abroad, you'll be happy to know that the Apple Card does not charge a foreign transaction fee. So there is no annual fee for Apple Card, nor is there a late fee. On the Apple Card website, Apple says the card has no fees, no, no, not even the hidden ones. And that includes all the usual fees traditional credit cards tend to charge like cash advance fees and international purchase fees. So because the, the Apple card is so deeply integrated with the wallet and Apple Pay, you get a lot of info about each purchase. You can even tap on a purchase in your transaction history to see where the purchase was made on the map. I already said that. And when it comes time to pay the bill, a clever interface lets you dial in how much of the balance you want to pay, letting you see exactly how much interest and principal you're paying as you select the amount. So that's great. So to kind of recap here, overall, our score of this card, we have scored this card is 7.5 over 10. 
This is a card in development. This is a card in progress. Goldman Sachs and Apple have a lot more work to do, but it's a great card, 7.5 over 10. And uh, you need to have the recommended credit score oscillates between 350 to 850, in other words, poor to excellent. Regular APR fluctuates between 1099% to 22% variable, no annual fee. And the rewards earning rate, so you earn 3% cash back at Apple and select Apple Pay Partners, 2% on other Apple Pay purchases, and 1% on everything else. And there is no foreign transaction fee. Okay, so well, uh, our ratings break down. In, uh, to get to the overall rating of 7.5% over 10, we actually uh, calculated based on our analysis and our review that on interest, which we are actually uh, scoring uh, Apple uh, Card 6.5 over 10 for interest. For fees, we are giving them uh, 9 over 10 because there's no, there's, they have no fees. That's fantastic. For rewards, we're giving them 5 over 10. If you're not an Apple user, there's nothing you can do with this card, all right? And for credit, we're giving them 6.5 over 10. All right, folks. Thank you so much for today's today's conversation. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your attention. And um, I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. Marvelous.